Oh, absolutely amazing, amazing evening. Wild animal calls around us all night. Uh, the lechwe is starting to move across the plains. Baboons calling, buffalo, hippo noises, uh, hyena. During my expedition to Zambia, I chose a rooftop tent made by Easy On. Easy On is one of the uh, pioneers of the rooftop tent, made in South Africa, exported to many, many countries around the world, and extremely popular. And it's extremely popular because, well, it works. The basic concept and design hasn't really changed much from their original, but the details have changed completely significantly although from the outside that's none of few of those details are obvious if you're looking at purchasing a rooftop tent and you're weighing up rooftop tent or ground tent which way to go hopefully the information i'll give you now will help you decide rooftop tent does it protect you from animals i suppose so but then again, I have to ask the question, well, what, is the, uh, what are the risks from animals? Are they real? Will an elephant tread on your ground tent? Truth is, an elephant is as likely to tread on your ground tent as knock that over. There's no difference. Elephants are extraordinary. They can walk around guy ropes from ground tents and not even trip over them. So against elephants, to me it's equal, there's no difference. Hippopotamus, actually about the same story. Hippos have so, so unbelievably rarely been a threat to campers in a ground tent. And the same goes for lion and leopard and hyena, as long as the tent is zipped up, <coughs> particularly with hyena. So is it protecting you from animals? Well, I suppose it is. But it's more protecting you against the perceived th threat than the real threat. So I look at it and say, well, because the difference, because the threat is so negligible, that's not a, that shouldn't be a main reason for buying a rooftop tent. But for many people it is. Even the perceived idea that the threat is reduced, if that gives you a better night's sleep, then that's a good reason to buy a rooftop tent. Okay. One of the things is people can think that the rooftop tent is so convenient you just pop it up. Well, yes, it does take less time to, to erect this tent uh, and, than a ground tent, than an average. And when I talk about ground tents, I'm talking about a fairly simple uh, umbrella type um, hanging ground tent. One of the simple ones, not a complex one. No, then you're in a different ballpark altogether. It, as you can see now, this is typically the layout that we've had during our entire trip. We haven't actually opened the side windows. We haven't opened the, the fly sheet flap at the, at the front because it's too much hassle. To, to do those things, I've got to climb on the spare wheel, climb, and even that's not enough. It's very difficult to do all of those other bits. It's a lot of hard work. If I was staying in one campsite for a long time, I would put in the effort. But all of our camps on this particular expedition have been one-nighters. I can't be bothered. I really just can't be bothered doing all of that work. And it's tricky to do because it's so high up. So in terms of that part of setting up the tent, a rooftop tent like this is more difficult than a ground tent. But in this basic configuration, it's less difficult. Okay, getting dressed up there, you need to be a bit of a contortionist to get dressed in one of these tents. They're not spacious. No rooftop tent is particularly spacious. Ground tents, on average, are, are bigger. Okay, it's easier to get bigger, more comfortable. Obviously, you can't stand up at that. You don't need much of a ground tent to be able to stand up and get dressed in it comfortably. So in terms of pure space, uh, it's quite small. Two people can sleep in there comfortably. Three people, not a chance. It's just too, it's just too small. Um, in terms of actual comfort and ventilation, there are many on the market. Uh, this is one of the better ones in terms of ventilation. So 
be very aware of that depending on where you're buying it for. So if you're buying it for Africa or Australia, hot climates, you need very good inset protection, and very good ventilation. That's a priority when looking at these tents. If you're looking at a European environment, then that is a um, colder environment, maybe even North America to some degree, uh, ventilation is less important than the hot climates. The ease of access up and down the ladder. Now, you know these croc shoes, these, these croc sandals? I have a love-hate relationship with those things because they are actually very, very comfortable. But on that kind of ladder, they are a death trap. I know of two people that have slipped wearing Crocs on that ladder. <clears throat> One of them was lucky. He landed on the table that had been laid out very similar to the way I've laid out here, uh, laid out the table here. He actually landed on the table. It broke his fall instead of the ground breaking his back. And he walked away. He was very lucky and he was in a remote area. The second one is a friend of mine who was uh, traveling in Uganda. He wasn't so lucky. He slipped and he fell. They had to airlift him out. He was fine, but he was injured. He was, he was badly hurt and that was the end of his trip. And he organized an ambulance airlift and everything and probably cost him a great deal of money and somebody drove his vehicle home. So he was, he could have been, uh, he could have been extremely badly hurt. He was in a very, very remote area. So he, he could get out and he was traveling with friends. So. So he managed to escape what, what was potentially a life-threatening situation simply because he was wearing the wrong shoes on an aluminium ladder early in the morning, wet with dew, incredibly slippery. So ingress and access, if you're not reasonably athletic, I would say not a great idea. Maybe think of a ground tent. Maybe it would be better for you. In terms of packing it up, now this is a big one. A ground tent will take more time than this tent to pack up. The ground tent, when you're rolling up the ground sheet, you tend to sometimes get a bit dirty. The equivalent here is to when you're putting on the cover, you tend to get a little bit dirty because the cover gets very, very dusty. So there again, it's kind of, a, kind of an equal balance. The other type of rooftop tent, which some, they're sometimes called clamshell, they are enclosed. They are far, far easier to open and far, far easier to wrap up and close. I've used them and that is actually my preference in terms of tent type. But again, they're not large tents. If anything, most are smaller. Now you're already struggling with size with, this, with, with rooftop tents. You're going even smaller with a clamshell type rooftop tent. So I would say, you know, you, you actually need to go into a shop and actually go through the process of erecting the tent and closing it because that's the real deal. For me, I like my camping simple, straightforward, not too much hassle, and I don't want to spend a lot of time erecting my tent or packing it up again. And so the rooftop tent, in the rooftop tent markets, there are some that are very complicated and really, I think, a pain to pack up. This one needs two people to do it. You could, on your own, you're going to struggle a bit on your own. You can do it on your own, but it's going to take about double as long, if not more. We have learned during this trip, the two of us working as a team, actually we've got this down sussed and we can wrap that tent up very quickly indeed. So, it, um, again, if you're traveling on your own, clamshell's a better idea. It just is, for all kinds of reasons, the main one being that effort it takes to erect and to pack away. If two of you are traveling, then go and play with both types and see which one you prefer. And maybe, after you've done enough playing around, you'll decide that actually, what are the advantages of a, of a roof tent over a a ground tent, maybe those advantages are not enough and the disadvantages which are increased fuel consumption which is considerable probably two liters per hundred kilometers is my guess is a guide average some will be more some will be less but that's you can expect that 
uh, weight high up on the vehicle. Uh, the vehicle is now top heavy. That is quite heavy. All rooftop tents are pretty heavy. You're talking between 70 and 100 kilograms, plus the weight of the mountings, plus the weight of the roof rack. So it's quite a bit of weight quite high up. That's not great for weight distribution. The other very important and vital part of a rooftop tent, which I think is probably measures as the, the biggest single advantage, our mattress, our sleeping bag, our pillows stay there. They don't, they don't get in the car. They stay clean, they stay dust proof, dust free, and they're completely out of the way until the evening when you need them. That to me in any vehicle where you're struggling a little bit with space is a huge advantage of a rooftop tent. Hopefully that'll give you something to think about. Happy shopping!